previously on Jennifer tries to make over the entire bathroom herself without any prior knowledge of plumbing skills. Severe water damage. Here is a before and after of what we've done so far. What up, hooligans? It's Jennifer, and welcome to part two of my bathroom makeover series. So, you guys have been waiting for this episode for a long time, and I've been working at it for a long time. So in the first episode, we tore out the old flooring, fixed the water-damaged wood, put in new flooring, and, oh, we can't forget the toilet room. <laughs> the toilet removal. I'm getting flashbacks. Just kidding, it really wasn't that bad once I got used to the smells and the questionable mushiness. So in this episode, I'm gonna be finishing up the floor area, installing the new toilet, which should be interesting, and kind of working our way up in elevation in the bathroom, including painting and dealing with some of the aesthetic issues of the bathroom. Also, I just wanted to mention that the entire first half of this video was filmed way back in December, so that's why we weren't wearing masks. So this video has really taken me like six months to film. It was a lot of work and there's still more work to be done. Also, I just wanted to add, you guys should stream my song, Talking Loud. It's out on Spotify. There's a music video, I'll link it down below. Yeah, I'm just very proud of that song, Stream Talking Loud. Anyway, let's get started. Hello, I have just driven to Home Depot, about to go in and buy some supplies. I already know that this is gonna be expensive because it's Home Depot. How am I gonna fit this in the car? We got it to work. Is this legal? I'm not completely sure but I'm pretty sure we're fine. All right, so I just was at Home Depot and I got the baseboard for the bathroom and we are almost done with the bathroom floor remodeling, which is very exciting. Hello, I am back home now. So let me just do a little haul of what I got. Um, I showed you guys the baseboard that I got. That's downstairs. I got this air register mount. I'm not sure if we're gonna use this yet. I don't know if I like the color. We do have a white one that we bought that's metal. This was $26, which is so expensive. The one that we already have was like six dollars and then got some silicone caulk and then just got some nails so we cut down the pvc baseboards with a circular saw and installed them with one and a quarter inch nails Then I laid down some washi tape because I ran out of painter's tape and I did this to prepare for the caulking. I always have to say that very carefully because it can slip out another way. So then I just squeezed an even bead of caulk along the seam and used my finger to smooth it out. I did the same thing for the bottom section and peeled the tape off to reveal a clean line. Hello guys. So last night we worked on the baseboard slash trim and that is looking really, really good now. I think it really completed the floor area. Today we tried to install the toilet, but we realized that we were still missing a couple things because it is a very technical aspect of the room and we wanna make sure that we get it right. So I just wanna make sure that we get it super waterproof and we get no leaks because previously the reason why we had so much water damage in the floor was because the toilet was not installed properly and through the hours of research that I did I realized the reason why so I'm gonna go out and get a couple things tomorrow I'm really scared because if we mess this up we're gonna have leaking and I feel like this whole renovation would have been for nothing so 
let's hope for the best. Okay, so there's a lot about the whole toilet situation that I have to explain because I kind of just like glazed over it, but it actually was a very big part of this renovation, clearly because it's the toilet. Obviously, I am not a professional plumber. I came into this with zero knowledge of how to do anything related to the toilet, so I definitely did take on a huge risk trying to do this myself but I was like super adamant on learning a new skill and like DIYing, doing it myself. I did watch probably over 50 videos on YouTube and did a ton of research about how to do this. So I felt like I was pretty well prepared for this and could do it myself. The actual removing of the toilet and replacing of the toilet is honestly not that hard. I think the average person can do it. But the bigger issue for us was that the actual plumbing in the house was kind of broken and like like old and worn out. So that was what really stressed me out. So if you don't feel like you're competent, definitely hire a plumber. I think in the long run, it's way safer and way easier to just spend the money and make sure that you don't have any leaks. Okay, I also didn't record any of this because honestly, I was just so frustrated and fed up and like, it was very technical. So I didn't really think that it would be interesting, but I kind of want to just go over what ended up happening with the whole plumbing system situation. So if you guys don't know how a toilet works, basically you have the bottom of the toilet here and you have the toilet flange in the floor, which is like the pipe. Those two are connected by a wax seal so that no water leaks out and they should be like pretty close in proximity, like basically touching. But for us, because there were so many layers of flooring between the bottom of the toilet and the flange in the floor, water was just leaking out of the sides. Like there was so much space in between and and the wax seal kind of just wore out over time, which is why there was so much water damage around the toilet area. Essentially, I bought some toilet flange extenders to rise up the height of the flange so that it would connect to the toilet. We also ran into a whole spectrum of issues, but the point is we got it done and I feel pretty confident. Well, I mean, I feel okay about the plumbing job we did. Over 50% chance that it won't leak. At the end of all of that, it was time to install the toilet. Hello, it is toilet installation day. I'm scared. Should I make this tighter? things going wrong. So our water supply line is not long enough now for the new toilet and the package is missing a piece. They only gave us one washer but we need two. So I'm going crazy. Moral of the story is guys just hire a freaking plumber. Don't do this yourself. I was just being a little bit dramatic because I was kind of frustrated, but we just picked up the new supplies and finished installing the toilet. School up, three for the kids in a jungle. I'm from on a humble, now I'm on a boat to Bermuda. No leaks so far. After that, we switched out the old air vent for the new one, which matches the color of the floor perfectly. We also added a door stop to the back of the door because currently if we open the door, it'll just slowly swing back to its closed position. So this was super easy to install and fix that problem right away. And after that, the entire floor area was finally complete. What a wild ride. I sure am glad that I never have to deal with that ever again in my life. Well at least until my next renovation. But I am grateful every day that I no longer have to stress about a plumbing situation that I had no business trying to solve in the first place. I know a lot of you guys might be worried about the plumbing issues and stuff because obviously I'm not a licensed plumber, but I can tell you that after six months of using the toilet, we're leak free. And then it was time to paint. So here's the situation. My dad actually did the majority of the painting while I was away on a trip in December. So I don't have any footage from that, but just take a wild guess at what paint color I ended up choosing. 
it was white. If you didn't guess white, stick around for a couple more room makeovers on my channel and you'll know soon enough. So he just went ahead and painted all of the walls as well as the cabinets. Now, my dad is notorious in my family for being a super fast worker, very efficient with his time, and we balance each other out in that way because I'm very slow, very detail oriented. As great as he is though, unfortunately he does not give a flying flange about details. So I was gonna have to go back in and clean up some of the painting and do some second coats, which in and of itself is not a big deal, but we ran into some issues, which I will detail in a bit. So I started out by filling some of the holes in the wall with some spackling, and then I sanded the rough areas on the walls and cabinets with some sandpaper. But then here's when I ran into the issue. As I started removing the uneven areas of paint from the cabinets, I discovered that the paint was peeling off very easily and in very large pieces. And that was because the cabinets were not sanded down before they were painted on, so the new paint had nothing to grip onto. So all of the layers of dirt and oil and old paint were basically repelling the new paint. So at any point in the future, if we accidentally scratched the vanity, the paint would immediately come off. So I went ahead and removed all of the paint off of the first cabinet door with a putty knife and sandpaper. And once I did that, I contemplated removing all of the paint from all of the cabinet doors and drawers. But then I was like, you know what, this is probably going to take way too long and it's probably probably not worth it because I didn't want my dad's painting to completely go to waste. Instead, I just peeled and scraped off the paint from all of the edges and sides so that the paint at least would not peel from the sides. I also used 80 grit sandpaper to remove the old paint and to rough up the edges so that the paint had something to cling on to. And then since I wanted to switch out the old handles for the new ones, I had to patch up the old handle holes with some filler because the new handles were going to be on the side instead of in the middle. Once those patches were dry, I just sanded those down with some sandpaper so that they were flush to the cabinet doors. And then to prep for painting, I laid down some newspaper as well as some washi tape, which reminds me I still have to get some painter's tape. I don't know, it's been six months and I still haven't gotten it. I also taped up the hinges because I had just finished scraping the paint off of those and I thought the original color of the hinges actually matched quite well with the new handles. And take a wild guess at what color paint I chose. Wait, you guys already know that, Never mind. So I just went ahead and painted the vanity. Once I finished the first coat, I applied a second coat to all of the cabinet doors and drawers. Hello. I am finished painting finally, and I am ready to peel off the tape, the most satisfying part. There's gonna be some leakage, so I'm gonna just clean that up after, but I'm excited to peel the tape off. Let's do it. So I just cleaned up the hinges and floor a little bit from any of the excess paint and I tried to remove the paint on the window from when my dad painted originally and here is a little sneak peek into what I was hearing. Ah. <gasps> uh. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I would rather look at ugly windows if it meant that I never had to hear that evil sound ever again. Did you hear the voice crack? That's how upset I am. I cannot revisit that. Mm -mm. That's a no from me. Absolutely not. Anyway, I continued peeling the tape and newspaper off of the floor. And then I started measuring the drawers and cabinet doors for a point to drill a pilot hole for the handles. But then I did a quick count of how many handles I actually bought and I realized I only bought six, which was only enough for the doors on the bottom and not the drawers. So then I just went back and erased all of the markings that I did on the drawers. So lesson learned, counting. 
And then I took my drill and just drilled a pilot hole with my drill. How many times can I say drill in the same sentence? Apparently, five times. Was that five times? I just mentioned the importance of counting. But anyway, now it was time to install the new handles. And this is what they look like. I think they look very sleek. I love the color. So I installed the handle onto the first door and I think it looks really good. So I proceeded to drill all of the holes in all of the doors. And then installed all of the handles. With all that being done, the vanity was finished. Well, actually, that's a lie. I still have to do the countertop and the sink and all the decor. The bottom, the bottom part of the vanity is finished is what I'm trying to say. But even still, at this point, I think the entire bathroom is looking so much fresher, brighter, more modern than what we started with. On that note, let's see some before and afters of the makeover so far. I really think a fresh coat of white paint just completely gives a new vibe to the bathroom. It makes it livelier, and I think the handles on the vanity just make it look so much more modern. And I am loving the new toilet because it's new, and it just feels new because it literally is new. I'm just a fan of the toilet situation, and I'm very proud of my plumbing job. Overall, I am very proud of the job that my dad and I did on the bathroom so far, but the adventure does not stop there. Next time, we are going to be installing the new sink, countertop, decorating, and it should be an adventure. So stay tuned. Thank you guys so much for watching. A shout out of the week is right here and I will see you guys next time. Bye.